Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we're talking about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the mid-season finale of The Flash, as well as the winter finale, which is, could also be arguably, you know, the same thing as the mid-season finale of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as well. I know, I'm just being all technical about it, but... Like always, uh, if I'm talking about something that you might not um, want to listen to, either because you don't care about the TV show I'm talking about, or the fact is that you haven't caught up on the latest episode, you can always look in the description down below, and I include the time slots when I start talking about each of the respective shows that I'm talking about in this particular episode. So, for example, if you don't want to hear about what I have to say about The Flash, you can skip right ahead to what I have to say about this week's episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. But starting off with the mid-season finale of Flash, a crazy... Crazy good episode. Uh, just so much to talk about, and I'm just going to have to uh, run it down. Obviously, we got a little tiny, tiny peek at Earth 3, which it looks very vibrant. I like I like how they are kind of distinguishing it from Earth 2, because Earth 2 had a very, like, a certain, you know, kind of filter put on it to look a little differently. And then, you know, Earth 3 looked a little more bright and vibrant. Like, the colors, you definitely see them kind of pop. Uh, we ended up seeing Jay taking on the prankster. Always nice to see Mark Hamill. Not prankster, the trickster. Um, which is very interesting to me. Like, Earth 3's trickster is very different than Earth 1's trickster. Because Earth 3's trickster, to me, looks a little bit more like the Joker than Earth 1's trickster's trickster does. I don't know. That was just kind of an interesting design. I mean, me being me, just in the back of my mind, I'm, I'm like, could that be a slight jab against, you know... Jared Leto's uh, Joker for like was that kind of like oh yeah it's like oh you thought that was a Joker it's like technically we have the real Joker here I mean you know Mark Hamill does like 90% of the voice the Joker voice acting so I don't know like it's just to me I just thought that was just kind of interesting I, that just something I kind of point out really like we got to see Jay kind of implement that helmet a little bit like you see the trickster shooting all those bullets and then like he um, catches all the bullets in the helmet and stuff like that just almost showing off to a certain extent but it was kind of cool it's kind of interesting because I brought it up uh, before. I was like, because I think I brought it up during the um, crossover, uh, during the Flash episode. I think I brought up the fact is that Jay, um, like Barry would obviously have to come to Jay about this whole like saboteur business. Because it's like out of anyone, he'd know most being, you know, a very, the more seasoned uh, speedster. Which is nice to kind of see them teaming up. for. This is actually their first real team up. So that was pretty cool. Interestingly enough though. Like it's, it's kind of interesting seeing even like. Even someone as old as Jay. Like being you know. Old with age comes wisdom and stuff like that. So obviously he's got to be faster than Barry. He definitely is faster than Barry. Because of what happens later on in the episode. Kind of shows that. But it's like even he can't even stand up. To Savitor, it's like even him, like he's in the same situation as Bear. He got tossed around like a rag doll, and it was like holy crap. And what I find even more fascinating, I mean, we kind of get to it later on. Was because at first I was like, how does he know about Barry's identity? Like he even knows who Jay is immediately. It's like how do you know? It's like how do you know what you know? But I'll kind of get to that a little bit later on. But um, you end up learning from Jay because Jay's like I've never actually met Savitor. Um, only heard about him because apparently Savitar kind of going back is actually the not necessarily the first meta human but the first speedster in general that he was the first one to kind of get in touch with the speed and that's kind of led him to become the way he is um we do see that he was just an ordinary man because I think I've brought it up before but like his outfit how he looks in the show is way different it looks like a regular costume from the the one version of him in the comic books I've seen it just looks like a regular um, get up um, but there's like a from the picture it looked like it was like a super old comic book at um, version of him this I mean I do like this version of him all like large and metallic like that um, it looks pretty cool but we do know that at the center of it is just a regular man who just happens to be super fast um because apparently jay talks about the fact is it's kind of a legend and rumor passed down through the speech force he heard whispers about it but that's about it no one ever knew about savitar like physically had ever met or crossed paths with him until now and apparently the reason why he's after barry is because barry's a threat because like for savitar it's all about being the fastest kind of like i'm sure that's a a thing with any speedster, but definitely with Savitar, because it's kind of like, well, I'm a god. There, I can't have anyone p 
possibly being a challenge. And Barry being as fast as he is, the fact is he's taken down Reverse Flash. He's taken down Zoom. It just shows that Barry's getting stronger and faster. And for Savitar, it's like he doesn't like competition. So the reason why he's coming after Barry so hard is because he want to wipe Barry out. Because it's like, I don't want the competition. So, But along with all that, we ended up learning more about Julian's whole situation. Because apparently the whole situation about being alchemy because i kept bringing it up it's like how can you be so eh, towards meta but didn't be alchemy and helping make metas i was like i didn't get it but then it turns out in this episode he's been blacking out the entire time like he it had no idea because i was thinking he was like oh man you're lying through your teeth barry's figured it out you're connected to the alchemy stone he brought a savitar and he was just kind of like how do you know that name is like dude you found out and it's like oh julian actually had no idea what he was doing because apparently Alchemy doesn't technically exist. Alchemy is just a persona that Savitar put on when he took possession of Julian. Apparently how he got to Julian, because basically Julian went on a, um, a dig um, uh, to look for this stone. Because basically he got visited by his dead sister and she was the only means of bringing... The stone is the only means of bringing her back to life. Ended up finding a stone. He ends up waking up in his hotel room. Finds out everyone that was part of the dig with him is dead. So he ended up running to America. That's a big reason why he's here. And why he probably hasn't been back home subsequently since. Because we see that that was like four years ago before now. So he probably has not been back home since. And he's been. And that's another thing too. It makes you wonder like. Is this another thing because of Flashpoint? Because the fact is, like, where... That's the question is, where was Julian in the original timeline? Makes you wonder. I don't know, because the whole Flashpoint thing make, brings up so many questions of, like, where someone was before and why they're here now, why things happened the way they did. I mean, at the end of the day, once again, it comes down to choices, obviously, but it does make you wonder, like, did Julian work somewhere else in the previous timeline? Did he not end up here in America? Did he end up dying? Because it's like... Savitar is here now because of the existence of the Flashpoint, and maybe that's one reason why Savitar has come after Barry, because it's like, Barry has gotten to the point where he can literally destroy, like, the universe because of what he did. Like, he's gotten so fast to the point that he can create alternate timelines and stuff like doing, like, he... I guess that's kind of a measure of how powerful he is, I guess. Like, the fact is that what he does is having such a drastic effect on a timeline to the point even, let's not forget, even the Dominators are an effect of Flashpoint, so. Which I did like the slight nod to the fact is that it happened. Like I said, with the whole Flash and Supergirl crossover, that was never really referenced. But um, just to me, it's nice that we got the acknowledgement of like, oh, yeah, yeah, then, you know, because this feels like, oh, the fact is she has to deal with the whole Dominator situation. Like, that was just, I don't know, just kind of nice. To, just, I appreciate the little nod. Like, cause we never really got that with the Supergirl thing. It's like, oh, man, I went to this other Earth, which we ended up finding out was Earth 38 now. But um, it's like, oh, I went to this other Earth, I met this other alien. Like, he probably talked about it before, but it's like, I, to my knowledge, to my memories of season two, we never actually got that conversation about him going to Earth 38. But nevertheless... What really made the whole situation sad is when you end up finding out that, like, oh, Cisco is seeing the same thing that Julian did. He was seeing his brother Dante, and he's like, oh, used to stone. Because apparently, like, I kind of brought the theory up before, and I was kind of, well, I say theory, but prediction. My thought on the project, the whole reason why, like, Savitar's trying to re be reborn. Because apparently where he's sealed away, he doesn't have a 100%. It's not necessarily he doesn't have a body, but it's more so he's kind of trapped where he is. Apparently, another reason why he hates Barry as much as he does, kind of shared uh, sentiment with Eobard. Apparently, future Barry has made past Barry a crap ton of enemies that he doesn't know about. Because apparently this is a future Barry problem, because apparently Barry in the future is the one that traps Savitar. But the fact is that the Philosopher's Stone, which I'm like, I don't know why it took me this long to kind of tie that together, you know. Um, the actor who plays um, Julian being Draco Malfoy from the Harry Potter movies. I know it's not the Philosopher's Stone, it's the Sorcerer's Stone, but still kind of close enough, you know. Borderlining magic if you want to. I mean, really it's more science, but you get my point. Nevertheless, it was just... It does seem like he has, he can come like temporarily kind of step into our world, but he's not fully there. And once the stone's put back in that case, it warps him back to whatever prison he was, whichever prison uh, Future Barry locked him in. Because even Cisco himself is like, I don't know what this box is. It's like run it through every test. It's almost like the box doesn't technically exist. That was kind of interesting finding out. But, um, 
really, I, I brought it up earlier, the reason why he kind of knows all the stuff he does is because he is from, I, you know, just thought about it, he is from the future. Well, well, yeah, from the future. Well, I mean, not necessarily from the future. I, I, I'm saying that, but he, he had, he's had access to the future. Because that is something I've never thought about before. Like, I don't know why that hasn't crossed my mind before. The fact is, Barry's traveled to the past. All these different speedsters traveling to the past. This is actually the first time Barry has ever been referenced to, like, traveling to the future. Um... Which I kind of get to that in a little bit, but it's just kind of like, it's something I was like, I never thought about that before. Barry has never been to the future, has he? So, Savitar, you know, being the first speedster, so he had to have been like, obviously, way in the past, which is like, how old is Savitar? I mean, really, is age even a thing for him? Because it's like, well, he travels through time so much. It's like, for him, you know, he was probably like, he could be like 25, but he was like 25, like, you know, for all we know, like, 300 years ago, but because he's traveling all around around time, it doesn't matter. Or maybe he just doesn't age. I mean, I'm, I'm very curious. Cause this is a, I mean, I'm curious, like, do speedsters age normally? I mean, the fact that Jay's as old as he is, sure, but we've never really gotten a... I don't know, maybe that's been referenced before, but I don't remember, like, do speedsters age normally? I mean, I know Kryptonians, obviously. That's always been a thing that... Well, not necessarily always been a thing, but it's kind of been set up that Kryptonians age very slower than slower than humans i'm wondering do speedsters do the same thing so is he kind of like been around for a long time in that sense or like i was saying before though because of the whole time traveling thing it could be like he's been around but um and it's kind of interesting because he's an enemy from the past that's traveled to the future and stuff but eobard's an enemy from the future that traveled to the past so i just think it's kind of interesting how they reverse of each other you know him being reverse flash and everything <laughs> i know um but essentially, he ended up leaving a very interesting message to them. Um, apparently saying, like, because he knows everything there is to know about every one of them. I mean, it's kind of like, I'm sure it's like Eobard. Because it's like, he know, he's done his homework because he's been through probably all these different points in time. But he's like, I know who you are and I know what happens to this group. One of you will die. One of you will fall. One of you will betray the others. And one of you will suffer pain worse than death. The moment that happened, I was like, oh, I figured it out. Like, I mean, especially because of the end of the episode, because essentially Barry and them get the idea. It's like, okay, we need to get rid of him. It's like, we can't necessarily destroy this thing. We can't bury it because who's to say someone else won't find it. And um, essentially, what I really liked is the fact is that, like, it's like, hey, let's throw it into the um, speed force. It's like, yeah, it's kind of like an infinite dimension of its own so it's like it'll be lost there kind of trapped forever so barry dashes around and then jay kind of well barry dashes behind jay kind of like leeching off his speed a little bit to move even further to kind of punch through to the speed force which is kind of showing you just how fast jay is the fact is that he's like way at little way ahead of barry in that whole sense just showing you how fast he is that's what i'm saying that's what i was kind of referencing like even someone like jay couldn't even stand up to savitar like you know he's faster than barry but even he couldn't do Anything. He was like, for him, it was like moving in slow motion. It was like he wasn't even moving at all against Savitar. Every time, like, Savitar just picked him up, just like Barry, like, um, he tried to dash towards him and just like throws Gary, um, Jay back down. But this whole situation ended up pushing Barry into the future where he sadly sees Iris dying before his eyes, being killed. Like, he sees future him there trying to save her, but um, sadly, Savitar kills her. And then you have Jay pulling Barry back to present day, and he's like, wait, what was that? He's like, yeah, that was the future. Like, apparently five months into the future, and it's like, wait, what? I didn't know we could travel to the future. It's like, I've always traveled to the past. I said, well, I'm like, I never even thought about it. I was like, right, you've never done that before, have you? Um, I was just like, it never crossed my mind that they haven't done that yet, because it's like, for them, for speedsters, it's a matter of just like, I guess, like, being fast enough and choosing the direction. If you focus enough, I guess you can. But I'm sure there has to be, like, a... I mean, we, I mean, technically, the whole situation with Eobar, because he was trying to go back to his original time, but there was a whole process about punching... Like, there was a whole process of trying to get him back to the future. Like, a lot of stuff had to be laid out, but, just like, straight up punching through to the future is probably another thing. But Jay's like, forget that, like... And Barry's like flipping out about it. He's like, "Dude, Iris is going to die." And he's and he starts remembering the the um, newspaper. He's like, "Oh God, no!" It's like that's why her name's not written up there because she dies. And it's like, 
it hits Barry even more because this is another flashpoint thing. It's like, remember, Iris's name, I mean, to our knowledge, Iris's name hasn't disappeared from that newspaper until flashpoint. Um, so it's, to him, he's going to blame himself. Like, the only reason why Iris is dying is because of me. Because I went back in time and now it's not just, you know, it's, it's, keep, it's like, and that, it's the gift that keeps on giving. And uh, like from a storytelling point of view, I really appreciate it because like something so simple, like he's traveled back in time before, but it's like, you know, he's never screwed up to this monumental level and we're seeing the ramifications of it. He's dealing with a speed God. He's dealing with the fact that the woman he's been in love with since he was a little kid is going to die. Like finally, after getting everything he's ever wanted, you know, he's going to lose it all again. I mean, he's literally lost his parents. It's like, how much more do you plan to take from Barry? Like I said, I kind of already saw this coming because I brought this up, I think, during... It was either before... No, no, I'm pretty sure it was because of um the Flash episode in the crossover, that whole newspaper thing. I was like, oh, the fact is her name's out there. She's going to die, isn't she? Granted, I will be fair... They're not killing her as brutally as she gets killed in, like, you know, at least one version of her that I, like I said, it's something I read, like, a while back. Uh, I, I referenced the fact that Reverse Slash slash Professor Zoom ended up phasing through her skull and killing her like that. She's getting stabbed. It still sucks, but it's not as brutal as, brutal as it could have been, but it still sucks. But Jay's like, just like there's infinite worlds, infinite Earths, there are infinite possibilities for the future no point in time is set in stone it's like the fact that marriage all you can do is live your life because yes that could come to pass or it couldn't be the fact is you trying to stop it might end up causing it to happen sooner or it might play into making that event happen so barry has to keep this to himself not letting anyone know about what he knows and he's acting a little weird around iris and stuff but it's like because Jay brings it up, that's why no speedster should ever know too much about their own future. Because it gets in your head like that, knowing the future will screw you over. Like, I'm, I'm kind of talking about, cur currently talking about shows that kind of reference that. Like, Once Upon a Time is an, a great example of knowing your future, basically screwing you over. And it's like, for now, it seems like Barry is handling it somewhat well. And the fact is that he's offering, to, he's living with Iris and whatnot. He's like moving, he's like, oh, let's move in together. Uh, both our names are on the lease and stuff like that. Because he's like, oh, we don't know what tomorrow holds, so. Which is like, it's beautiful, but at the same time, it's like super sad. Because it's like, dude, how unfair is that? It's like, how will that play out? Will they straight up kill Iris or not? I mean, phew. I mean, these shows don't shy away from killing people at all. I mean, granted, in, in, in any shape or form, especially considering it being The Flash, he, they technically could keep Iris around because it's like, well, there's Irises from other Earth, just like the whole um, John Wesley ship. It's like he's no longer playing Barry's dad because Barry's dad is dead. I mean, obviously, he came back to that character in the first episode in Flashpoint, obviously. But, you know, they still haven't retained as, you know, Jay Garrick. But who's to say that... um. You know, we might not cross paths with a, uh, a different Earth Iris, or maybe things will play out differently. Like, who's to say? Once again, time is not set in stone. Like, time is very malleable, and there's no telling how this will all end. I mean, the point is, how does he get free is the question. It's like, does he get free of his own volition, or does someone else break him out? It's like, you're stuck in a speed force. That's not something easy to get access to. You see what Barry and Jay had to do just to access it, to throw something in there. So it's like, how does he get out to the point he can kill Iris? And it's like, I mean, that's another thing, too, knowing that it's coming, too, because it's like, what if, you know, what? wait till Joel or Wally finds out. It's like, oh, you knew again and you're hiding stuff from us? It's like you hid the whole Flashpoint thing from us. And it's like hiding the fact is that Dante was still alive in another time. It's like Cisco's just forgiven him for that. And if something happens to Iris and Barry's like, I, I saw it coming. And, you know, Wally and Joel could be like, we're never forgiven. It's like you had an op You knew about this coming and you didn't tell any of us. You kept this to yourself. My, my sister, my daughter is dead because of you didn't act, you know? So the ramifications for this, it's like, I'm sure Barry's going to try and do everything he can because he's, I'm sure he's going to be very close to Iris and never let her out of his sight. Just a, probably at the very um, drop of a hat, very scared that anything could play towards that future. I mean, because he has five months to live his life and try to, I mean, but at the same time, you know, Barry, he's not going to let this go. Because the thing is, you also have to think about what will Barry do if he 
finds out, you know, if things play out that way, what will he do? Will Barry try to, like, go to the future even though Jay told him not to? Which, I mean, he's already screwed up monumentally with Flashpoint. So, it's like, you know, he's not trying to do any more time traveling. But even then, it's like, knowing that the woman you love is going to die, it's not the easiest thing. Like, it, I mean, like I said, it's not even like a girlfriend that just recently came in his life. Him and Iris have been together since they were kids, dude. He's been in love with her ever since then. So, it's kind of like, it's harsh to take someone that close to you, that dear to you, that important to you away, and it's just like, it's like I said, Barry's lost so much, he's lost his mom, he's lost his dad, it's like, let him keep this, it's like, holy crap, I mean, I mean, who's to say, like, I get the feeling Barry will still screw around in the future, maybe he will, maybe he won't, I mean, we'll just have to wait and see, um, I really, I really feel bad for Cisco because it's just kind of like being taunted with the fact it's like, oh, you can get your, you can get your brother back. You just gotta, uh, kind of. It seemed like he was getting swept up by the stone too, so it's just kind of like, oh, and it's heartbreaking because it's like, hey, if you turn your back on me, I'm gonna disappear and I'll never come back. But it's just like him getting. I like the question is, how the hell did he do that? Is how I'm wondering. Like, I, I guess specifically the stone does that, but still, it's like. How does it all correlate, I wonder, like, what did future Barry do to kind of trap him where he is? Like, what is that thing? Is that something actually originally from the Speed Force for it to be something that technically doesn't exist, existing out of, like, you know, some maybe it's an object that exists out of time or something like that? I don't know. So many questions. Also, we have the, um, like, the person who betrays everyone, and it's like, oh, well, only person in mind is Caitlyn, because that whole, like, like I say, even when it came down back in the Killer Frost episode, even when it came down to Caitlyn versus Cisco, for one, she was full on Killer Frost when that went down. Plus, different settings. You could argue all well, time and everything, so things play out a little bit differently. But it's like, obviously, it's going to be Caitlyn. But the thing is, like, what does this all mean going forward? Like, will she be the one to betray them? I'm like, currently, she's the only one I can see. Not unless it's Julian, because Julian does know about Barry being. The Flash is the only way you kind of get to trust him. But it kind of worked out in the end because Julian, you know, it's like, oh, after everything you've done for me, he went to the party and everything. He also got um, Barry kind of his job back because it's like seeing Cat and apparently uh, put Barry's papers through yet. So it's like still an opportunity for him to kind of, you know, so that's going to be interesting seeing them work together in the future, like knowing what he knows and everything. So it's like there's always a possibility that Julian ends up betraying them, but we'll see. I wonder will he kind of start working as a part of Team Flash from now on, so. And once again, because like brought it up before, it's like Cisco's vibes, are they ever wrong? There's still the whole Earth 2 thing. It's like technically that could have been him, you know, because Jay said it himself, like there's infinite future. So that could have ended up being a possibility with the whole Zoom situation. But the fact of the matter is it didn't work like that. It's because time changed. So the whole thing could be said about Iris. Maybe the whole maybe the whole thing's like a fake out or something, you know, once again, referencing the whole I, I referenced it before with Once Upon a Time, I'll reference again, maybe we get a little bit of that Doctor Who season 16, it's like the perfect example I can give of like a, a death situation where it's like clear cut, like oh, the future is this, you're dead, like it's like oh, clear cut, that's the day the Doctor dies type of situation, so it's like maybe there's something like that, and there's more to it than that, maybe or maybe they're just going to straight up kill Iris, I mean, we really won't know, because apparently the show's not coming back until the 24th, which I was I kind of halfway expecting, I was hoping it'd be a little earlier in January when it comes back, but apparently not, but, I mean, because the thing also, too, I mean, for one, I'm almost skipping over the fact is that Wally has uh, got his Kid Flash outfit, so we're definitely going to be seeing that in the future, so that's going to be pretty awesome, still, like, I've always kept wondering, why is Joe, I mean, I get he's a protective father and stuff like that, I still don't get why he's like, you're okay with Barry doing what he's doing, but it's not, you're not okay with Wally, it's like, yeah, your reasoning before is kind of like, oh, he's a little bit like me, so that's why I'm like, okay, I can follow that, but it's like, I still don't get why, I mean, he was super pissed about HR, I mean, granted, that was Wally's fault, HR specifically said, don't tell anyone about it, because we're not about to deal with the wrath of the um, West family, and it's like, what does Wally do? Blurt out the fact is that he's been training, it's like, oh, you idiot, you kind of ruined everything, but it does seem like they're okay with everything, because he did help out with the whole, he kind of acted as a distraction for Savitar, it's like, dude, there's like, because also, another thing to think about, too, is like, this is spoilers for the show. I mean, who knows? I mean, because I, I already got this spoiled for me, so it's something I'm throwing out there, too. There's always the Jesse Quick angle, too, because apparently she wasn't a speedster for long in the comic book. I don't know, like, whether that's just kind of like an old-school 
version of her life that's like that, or whether it's like, um, it's always like that for her story that she always kind of dies. I'm not sure about that, but it's like, that's always a possibility. Because, I mean, currently we have four speedsters. I mean, you know, good guy speedsters. We got Jesse Quit, we got Kid Flash, we got Jay Gear, and we got Barry Allen. And it's like, and the fact is, we're dealing with all this. I know it's a little too much, but the fact is, we're dealing with all this future stuff. Makes me wonder if we're going to get impulse this season or not. I highly doubt it because, I, like I said, we're already introducing Jesse Quick. We only just introduced Jay Garrett last season, and it's like so. There's no way, you know. I feel like they're going to go out of their way to introduce impulse. Not unless they end the season off on that, you know, because we are dealing with the future. And now I'm thinking this has to deal with the the future that future Barry from like what was it 2056 was talking about the war that was coming. I feel like it more so dealt with this than the Dominators. I think that's what he was more so aiming at. Because I don't... Because everyone kind of knows about that now. So it's like, that's always a possibility. Especially considering, he, you know, why he's warning them. Because maybe he was warning them against Savitar is what he was really um, referencing. Or maybe it's something... Else. Because Savitar is like a god, so he's got his own followers and stuff like that. So obviously he's going to make an army of metahumans to kind of... Uh, take control of this world so like I said a very good episode and I'm very interested to see where everything goes from here it's just so good like I said super sad I have to wait but I will wait patiently just to see where things kind of uh, pick up from here and now moving on to the winter finale of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. A very good episode. Things didn't necessarily go down the way I was kind of expecting them to. The whole Eli situation, like, I was halfway expecting him to kind of be like a continuous villain because he's kind of like a big baddie considering all the powers he had. Like, kind of a Lash situation, like a full-time season villain. It's like only like, we only got him at the tail end of this part of the season. So I was kind of like, I mean, not unless he's going to pop up. But I mean, granted, I could get into that a little bit more later on. A lot of stuff went down in this episode. Um, for one... Uh, Jeffrey uh, Mace finding out about Ida. I really like that. He's just like, what? She's so human. Like, you know, I'm not weird. I'm weirded out. Not just because of the whole, like, the fact is I possibly had a thing for her or whatnot, but also because it's like, the fact is it goes against the accords. Hasn't anyone read them? Um, but it seems like, because it was Coulson who actually let that tidbit of information slip. And apparently he did it on purpose because it's like, you know, the whole, uh, Fitz finding out what he did last season about, like, shipping Simmons off to somewhere unknown, like, you know, the whole senator situation, finding out about that, he's trying to play his cards right, trying to, you know, find out what it is that Jeffrey's really aiming for, because it's like, because May even points out something like, the fact is, it's like, no, you know what Jeffrey's is always done, he's always had his back, he doesn't care about... Only interests that matter are his own interests. And still, it's like, even to this episode, it's like, I brought it up before. It's like it's hard to say where Jeffrey, Jeffrey. I keep calling him Jeffrey's Mace. It's hard to say where Mace's like allegiances lie. Is a hundred percent with Shield? Is it his own reasoning? I mean, granted, him and Colson end up having that conversation later on. It's like yeah, confronting him because it's like Colson, you never have my back about this whole situation. If you want to lead Shield, then tell me. It's like the fact that you never back up my plans. You always have your own interjections. Like oh, it should be run this way. You point put me in this position for a specific reason to run Shield. It's like let me do it. And he's like you know, but you're up here hiding all these secrets and stuff like. He's like secrets. All right, then tell me about the whole Simmons situation. The fact is, you meet with the senator and stuff like that. What's your dealings with that? Granted, you know, I was wondering if there was more to it like that, but then I was like, all right, all right, I remember, because he didn't bring it up, I was like, forgot, the whole reason why he made that deal with her was because of uh, the whole prison situation where Robbie killed that cell, um, that prisoner, as well as them working with Quake to break into the prison and stuff like that. So I was like, all right, all right, covering up that. Because he was bringing up the fact this it's like, there's not that much trust between us. There's no trust at all. Like, you know, which is true, but it's like, part of me feels like there's more to it than that. Maybe that's all there really was, but I feel like he's aiming for something else that we just don't quite know yet. Because I've, Sim has kind of brought it up before. Like, she kind of references the fact is that he's not the hero that most people think he is. That there's a little shadiness to his past, which I'm sure we'll kind of get answers to uh, later on. And side note, they reference it in this episode. They're like, oh, you never know. Uh, like Eli's doing kind of breaks the laws of phys physics and stuff like that. It's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> it can always be magic or whatever. And he's like, oh, I don't like And Fitz is like, oh, I don't like magic or clowns 
or clowns um, stalking you in the dark or something like that. Like something super specific. And fit, you see Simmons kind of looking like, like, what? Where did that come from? It's, it's very interesting. I love how that's kind of a staple fear a lot of people have. In like TV shows and cartoons, I, I've come across that a lot. Like clowns. I don't know. I get it. I mean, especially when you watch the movie It. Um, so it kind of makes sense. You know, that's an example of a clown that kind of freaks you out. It's like, I never really felt like that about clowns. But again, considering the whole like clown thing that was going on most recently, which I haven't heard anything about it recently, recently, but you know my point. Nevertheless, getting off topic here, nevertheless, that's just kind of interesting to me. Um, once again, bringing it up is like that I'm kind of making a nod toward Doctor Strange because, it, like I said, the Marvel Universe is kind of based on science, more specifically science fiction at this point. So it's like magic is like pfft, magic's just science we haven't explained yet. So I don't know whether they were referencing that. Will they reference that in the future? Like I brought that up before. I was like wondering, like, how is Doctor Strange going to fit in, the, you know, in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? You know, like I said, the movies don't have the hugest impact, but they do play a part. So a new development like that means like, hey, like, what is that mean for like not just you know marvel in general but also like the tv show a show that heavily pushes more towards the science fictional side of things the more science fictional side of the marvel universe because there is a lot of magic and stuff connected too so nevertheless i don't know if that was kind of a reference to that or not um Another interesting thing we ended up finding out, apparently the person Coulson really would have preferred taking over S.H.I.E.L.D. would have been Daisy and not Mace. Which she's like, real, like Daisy's like, what, what, me? Nah, maybe in like a comic book or something. Which begs the question, did Quake take over, um, well her name isn't Quake, it, is it, it's Tremors, isn't it? Or is it Quake? I don't remember now. Like her, like her alias when it comes to, um... You know, just like everyone has their superhero alias. Just like, you know, Steve Rogers is Captain America. I mean, one of the Captain Americas. But nevertheless, it's like, didn't, like, is it Tremors or is it Quake? I don't remember which one it is. Because I know Tremors is what Matt calls her. So maybe her codename is Quake. I don't remember. But nevertheless, I don't, I don't really know about her much in a comic book. Only that she is a comic book character. So I'm wondering, did she at some point take over S.H.I.E.L.D. or something? Obviously, maybe they're just referencing the fact that they're like, hey, you know. Just referencing Quake as a comic book character altogether. Because apparently, an uh, interesting thing I didn't know about this, apparently the showrunners, I, this is something I've heard, I, whether it's true or not, the showrunners didn't originally know whether or not they were going to make Daisy, well, when she was originally Sky, they didn't have any idea that they were going to make her Quake later on, so... I mean, you know, there's a whole... The show kind of has to go through, I think, a lot of loops and stuff to be able to pull out any Marvel characters. I'm sure they had to go through a hell of a lot of stuff just to get Ghost Rider. Maybe it was a simple task, but when it comes to other stuff, it seems like they're not able to get access to a lot of stuff for, you know, because of the overall cinematic universe. I'm sure that kind of makes it a little harder in general from what, what pool they can pull from. It's like they probably have to pull from like very, very, very lesser known Marvel characters for them to get access to, you know. So, I mean, but nevertheless. Um, it was interesting finding out what Eli, Eli's uh, motives were. I mean, it's not like, oh, like, oh, I've suddenly turned evil. Apparently for him, this has all been about respect because he's never gotten respect his entire life. A lot of people say he cheated or didn't deserve to get where he was. A lot of the scientists that he has such a problem with and everything, it's kind of like, hey, you know, they always had this condescending look at me like they were doing me a favor, even though I was just as smart, if not smarter than some, if not all of the people there, and it's like, they treat me like I'm nothing more, because his original job there was as a janitor, wasn't it? But it's just kind of like, apparently, you know, he was treated as kind of like a second-class citizen, that he wasn't good enough to be where he is, and that's what this is all about, ego and pride, because, you know, for... Robbie, it's like, nah, you, you screwed us over, that's why we're here. It's like, yeah, you could say it was the scientist, you know, Paul, and his, like, he's the one that sent those guys after you guys because he thought he was coming after me. It doesn't change the fact is that you still got just as much blood on your hands because it's like you've sacrificed and used so many people. I mean, you put them in that situation. You've caused this problem because of your thirst for power because you wanted more. The way he was making it sound, you know, because he legitimately thought of himself as like, oh, I've gotten to the point, I'm a god. You know, I can create a city of my own and whatnot. And it's like, wow. I guess for someone who's never gotten respect, it's like, that's all you want. And it's like, he feels like this is his opportunity to get what he's always wanted. So, But apparently, it's not just as clear-cut. Because even though he's got these powers, they're not 
out of nowhere because it kind of, you know, Fitz kind of explains it, you know, with the law of the universe, essentially, you can't make nothing out, can't make something out of nothing. So apparently that alternate kind of in-between dimension that Robbie, Fitz, and Colson were in last episode, apparently that's where he's been pulling stuff from. He's been pulling energy from that world and bringing it into this world and shaping it into different stuff, whether it was making water or making carbon. Interestingly enough, kind of seeing more of his powers, he made that guy spit out diamonds because apparently he filled the dude's lungs with diamonds and he just kept spitting them out. And he's like, yeah, if you guys want your payment, you might have to cut them open to get it. Cut open his lungs to get us like that's pretty brutal. But in a sense of that matter, that's why I'm kind of like, man, like I really expected him to be much of a longer lasting villain, but apparently not. Apparently he just kind of dealt with. I mean, to our knowledge, for now he's possibly dealt with. I mean, who's to say what the future might hold? He might come back because it's like being as powerful as you are, having access to the powers you do, is kind of like you were easily taken down like that. I mean, it wasn't just kind of an easy thing. They had to do a lot of setup, essentially. They kind of had to take him to that other world that uh, the others were in last episode, that kind of in-between, alternate dimension type of world. Side note, has Daisy been able to, like, absorb quakes before? Or was this, like, the first episode? Because, like, the seismic activity was increased because of what he was doing. It was basically creating bigger and bigger shock waves. And basically, at points throughout the episode, Daisy's kind of absorbing it. Even to the point that she could even feel them even when they were kind of way up in the air, she could still kind of feel the vibrations from um, it kind of like them building up a little bit. So it's like, has she always been able to do that? Or is that just kind of like a this episode type of thing? If so, like, would this what would this mean for the future for Daisy? Does this mean she'll kind of learn how to absorb them a little bit more to kind of like bounce back, kind of triple foot, like, you know, kind of at one point, like quadruple her power at all at once and then send that out as kind of like a counterattack or something like that? I mean, maybe it's just kind of a one-off thing. I mean, maybe we'll see more of it in the future. I don't know. I just I thought it was very fascinating. But apparently it's something, you know, obviously super dangerous because it was taking a toll on her. Not just because of her gauntlets. Because her gauntlets were in good condition, but it was putting a strain on her body. She was getting super drained and tired. I'm sure her body was wearing out because of it. So, if it, I'd probably have to say uh, VIP, like not VIP, uh... MVP is what I'm uh, thinking of. The, probably, to me, I think MVP of the episode, freaking Yo-Yo kicking ass like always. It's like, dude, when she first comes into that building, she's using her power, and she steps. I can, I don't know. It's some substance that basically help ignite the room or whatever. And then she's running from the fire, and then there, you see the fire kind of catch up to the after image she has because she's like a step or two ahead of her after image, and she barely makes it out of the um, place. I really love the whole conversation with Mac where she's like, the fact of the matter is, she's like, I'm super pissed. I got caught on fire. I lost my favorite jacket, and I basically have you here kind of babying me, being like, oh, let, let me take care of you and stuff like that. I was like, no. Um, plus that whole situation when Colson was in there by himself and everyone came in to kind of kick ass, she busts in, uh, she, um, pulls Max shotgun axe out of one guy and points it at another guy, then goes over to Colson, takes the gun, cause Colson had his hand out all ready for it initially, takes the dude that's in front of him, takes his gun and puts it in Colson's hand and kind of claps it, claps it clasp it in his hand and then put the device on Eli and then just bounce and it's just like everything playing out like that it's like she's just so sick dude I just love it just that slow motion of it just it looks so cool and then to have even Mace kind of show up in a suit kicking ass because for him it's more so a publicity stunt because it's like hey let the world see the current director kind of stepping out there in the field doing his thing so it's kind of like okay sure I don't think you were necessary to the operation, but sure, you wanted to go there just to kind of prove a point. And then you had, because, you know, Robbie was stuck on those carbon spikes, and basically, Colson had brought the chains to kind of uh, pull them, which I was not expecting that to be what the purpose of those chains were. I was like, oh, we're arming Robbie up to use that flame. To oh, he never actually used it. It was meant to pull him off the carbon. Okay. I mean, especially with, like, his high tech, like, you know machine arm i'm sure that was going to help out but it's like robbie took the opportunity to take out eli so we see him burning whether he's dead or not it's hard to say but the fact is that it looks like he might be gone and robbie is for now too because he's kind of popped up in that other world but um because you have colson later on referencing the fact is that the other writer did so it's like obviously robbie's coming back and he, she's like wait what what do you so is she referencing I keep forgetting his name, but he's the 
Nicolas Cage's character from the movies, that particular Ghost Rider, apparently he's the one that they're kind of noting that that might be him. Um, in this, in that time, the person who originally came to him, that might have been him as a Ghost Rider coming to Robbie, passing the torch along. That apparently he was in that world before and he escaped. That's how he came to be here. I, I don't know whether that's true or not. I don't. I don't know. That's what it seemed like Coulson was kind of saying. So, but we did have because um, essentially there was that cool moment where Daisy was just like she had to get out of there because it's just all the what she absorbed and everything, and she shot off into the air and she was like super high. And then I was like, oh crap, 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 because she's about to crash. And I was like, oh man, she's about to die. Like somebody catch her, but she was able to kind of stop herself. But I was like, oh yeah, but you have to stop yourself in front of all those reporters and everything. But then you have Mace kind of stepping in, is like up. Ah, uh, actually, we you've all thought that she was actually a bad guy. She was a terrorist the entire time. She's been working as a secret agent, you know, undercover. Well, we're well, you know, we're glad to be, you know, if it wasn't for Agent Johnson, you know, she ended up helping save the day and whatnot. So she is kind of back with Shield. At first, she was kind of reluctant about it because she's like, she didn't really know, like, the whole following the rules thing. It's like, you know, being a lone wolf, you kind of get used to that. You kind of enjoy that, kind of being the one to decide how things play out. But for her, it's like, you know, she missed other aspects of it, too, you know. And they, you know, obviously, the family missed her, too, so. Like I said, it's going to be very interesting to see, like, what, like, what, it, well, I mean, I already kind of know what the future holds for the team for a, a certain regard. I mean, I'll kind of get to that soon enough. But it's like, it's going to be interesting seeing, like, the team, like, now that they're kind of fully back together, like, see them kind of kick ass and take names and see where it goes. Like, especially this whole May situation, like, where the, the whether how that plays out. Because the senator now doesn't have as much leeway as she did before, because it's like, now that he kind of outed uh, Daisy as kind of like, oh, she's been working undercover the entire time, it kind of takes a little way from the validity of, like, oh, the fact is they're working with a criminal. It's like, no, she was working undercover the entire time, so it kind of lets them save a little face. He kind of cornered... Um, Daisy with that, but still, it kind of gets the point done, so it's like, it kind of excuses some reactions. It does mean, probably mean that we will be kind of, because I'm sure the watchdogs aren't necessarily dealt with, especially because the senator is in such a position, but that is the thing, like, why does she, ha like, you get some of the inhuman hate, but the whole situation is, why does she hate inhumans to such an extent, yet she's studying one so vigorously? To me, whoever he is, I'm thinking it has something to do with Inhumans. Like, I, was th I started thinking about this after the last episode. Maybe it has something to do with kind of like a means of wiping out Inhumans. It's kind of what he is. He's supposed to be her ultimate weapon against Inhumans. Kind of like... Kind of almost Lash 2.0, if you want, if you would go as far as saying, I, I, I kind of go as far as saying. So maybe that's kind of his purpose. Or trying to re-engineer whatever power he has. To maybe kind of pass them along to other people, kind of stepping into different territory, kind of thinking of like um, Infamous. That was a big part of like uh, Infamous Second Son is the fact is that there are certain, you know, dupe agents. I know I'm like, if you don't know Second Son, this might not mean anything to you. But nevertheless, there were like government agents who basically got a little bit of. Augustine's power, her um, concrete power, so that basically they could use it, but not to the, the full extent that she could. They weren't full conduits, they were more so like low grade ripoffs, essentially. So, what if that's the point to make pass his power on and make it kind of like more accessible to humans, like that people have access to these powers too and use them for the good of the world to destroy? Like, you know, other, um, literally first word that was about to pop out my mind is, uh, my mouth was metas, uh, in humans. It's, it's really hard when I'm dealing with both the flash and agents of shield on the same night with similar concepts, like, oh, meta humans and inhumans. It's, it's, it, you know, it's okay. I mean, it's especially more so because it's DC versus Marvel, which is like, I've already stated before, like how I stand on that. I love DC and I love Marvel equally. It's like, you know, I might be familiar with some of one side's heroes more than I am another, but still. It doesn't change the fact is I love them all. I'm sorry. I'm burping and air is not going down the right way when I'm swallowing. I do apologize. I'm kind of just, uh, I hate it when my brain is kind of all over the place. Um, so I'm thinking maybe along the same lines of something like that could be where they're aiming for. I mean, we won't know into the future, obviously. I keep saying that. I need to stop saying that. Uh, but we've really got an interesting thing at the very end of the episode. I did, I thought about it, but I didn't bring it up until this episode. I mean, I don't think I brought it up last episode, but the whole situation with um 
Ida, because apparently, well, I mean, I, interesting things, apparently she bleeds, obviously it's fake blood, and the fact that she can feel pain, more so as to make her seem more human, because she is supposed to be a decoy, a shield, so as to make people underestimate her a little bit, it's like, oh, she's not a machine, because the way she's acting and stuff like that, the fact that she's bleeding, make her more human, so people will be distracted and think like, oh, they took her down, when in actuality they didn't, she's meant to kind of distract well, apparently, you know, the guy kind of like, uh, Mace is kind of right hand man. He's kind of like the publicity dude, kind of, uh, ended up gathering some materials because Mace is kind of like bringing Radcliffe's, um, whole situation with Ida as well as, you know, his research kind of bringing it under Shield's watch, which is one of those reasons why I'm like, I don't trust him. At first, he's asking all these questions about the dark hold, and then he's like, oh, he's asking Radcliffe, it's like, oh, so you're actually more afraid in the dark hold than you are Ida? And he's like, yeah, because it's like, that's like, We've seen what it did to Eli. It's like, you know, so what's to say, like, if someone really tried to tap into it, like, just how much harm they could do? Because apparently, I think someone else referenced that, too, I think. Because the whole Darkhold situation is supposed to be connect. Like, because still at this point in time, I haven't seen um, Doctor Strange. I know, shame on me. It's just one of those things. Not that I don't want to see it, it's just I don't go to theaters that much. Um, but... Apparently, that's kind of connected to Doctor Strange in a sense. The Dark Hold has kind of been missing for a while, but nevertheless, so it's like it's a lot of power to kind of be tapping into, which we still don't know exactly where that is now after everything was said and done with it last episode. But it does seem like it is having a negative effect on Ida because apparently she's doing kind of her own thing. Um, the guy that was packing up stuff to kind of return to Shield. Um, ended up coming across what she was working on, and she snapped his neck for it, like, very effort effortlessly, too, and one-handed. I was like, okay, I I guess I was like, he, she's going to snap his neck, obviously, but at least she's going to do it with two hands. I, I, I'll know when it's coming when uh, her second hand lifts up, but she did, she just, I was like, okay, because... I think I brought it up before. I don't, I don't, I can't handle that. That's just, I don't know, that always bothers me. But what we end up finding out on the other side of it is like May. Another May, because there's a May back there hanging out with Colson. Not unless that's the same May. Like that was her later on at a different point in time when she was meeting up with Colson, or I don't know. Because my theory was the fact that she was trying to make a human body, I think specifically for herself, a means of tapping her brain into giving her, because the way she was looking at Daisy in this episode, like kind of like seeing the human interaction between Daisy Simmons and Fitz, it did seem like she was trying to understand humans a little more. That's kind of the whole thing, because it's like, there's a lot of human things that she doesn't quite get. They don't kind of click, and it's like, that's why I was kind of thinking, maybe, you know, I brought it up last episode, thinking like, maybe she's trying to, because she was mapping out a brain and stuff like that, so I'm like, she's trying to create a human flesh body for herself, because she doesn't want to be a machine anymore. She wants to be more human than anything else, or, I don't know. It does seem like the dark hole is kind of taking it, so, I mean, the fact is, like, there's no telling just what exactly she got inside of her brain like what exactly she pulled from the dark hole that's not connected to doing what she just needed to do i mean it does seem like she took that information and she applied it to other means so it's like does that make does that mean this is another may is a person that she has locked up their real may and that is actually a fake may with colson kind of may seemed a little different this episode i don't i don't know whether that was because of that, like, what if May's actually been missing since last episode, and just no one never knew, because it was a fake, it's like, it's hard to say, like, which way that could mean, the fact that she's bleeding and everything makes me think that's the real May, she's like, don't worry, I'm gonna clean you up, so it's like, I think that's the real May, and I think the one that's with Coulson is fake, just because, because she was a little different from most Mays, because she's a little chipper, I mean, also because it's like, to me, the real May would be, I don't know, would maybe in casual clothes, though, because that was the thing, I was like, it could explain why, because it could be like, okay, that could just be May, because she's in casual clothes there, versus, like, you know, that's her, like, shield suit up, and it's like, you know, you could get access to that easily, but it's like, I don't, I don't know, because you do kind of seem like it might be that whole, like, maybe that whole Coulson and May thing, it's, like, always been in the back of your mind, but, um, I don't, I don't know whether that's just them just, going forward as partners, or whether that will lead to something else, like I said, I got little peeks at the future, uh, episode, is kind of, um, be picking up with this in the second half of the season, because like, it does seem, I am a little sad to see, I kind of figure Ghost Rider might be going away because of the whole, like, I thought the circumstance of him going away would be like, okay, Robbie's like, yeah, I got something else to take care of, it's like, yo, look out for my brother Gabe, or something like that, but, 
for now, it seems like he's going away. But, like, who's to say him and Eli, like I said, Eli's most likely dead, but we really won't know into the future. But, you know, obviously he will pop up again, whether it's going to be this season or not. Only time will tell. So it, it's seeming like she is going to be possibly leading, be the main antagonist of the second half of the season. Like, from the little bit we've seen, get to see it looks pretty interesting, like, what's going down. I want to understand her a little more better, you know, because it was something even... um Mace kind of brought up at the beginning of the episode, it's like, did we learn nothing from Ultron? And it seems like, I don't, it don't seem like it's going to be necessarily a situation like Ultron, similar but very different. Like I said, I feel like she's trying to be more human than anything else. Because she also went against her protocol too, so that's another thing. I'm guessing something she learned from Darko, because she's not supposed to be able to hurt people. She's only there to defend, not to kill. But she killed that dude. She snapped his neck pretty easily, so... And also, final note, I kind of want to bring up, because I was talking about the whole Coulson and May thing. Thank you, Yo-Yo and Mac. It took you long enough. I've been waiting for it since, like, last season when you first met. Because it was, like, instantly, like, yo, there was something there. And it's just kind of like, he's been just reluctant to tell her how he finally feels. But, like, they finally made out and everything. It's like, finally, it took you too long enough. Jeez Louise. But then you see Coulson and um, Daisy kind of walking down the hall and just almost halfway expecting him to say something, but they didn't. And it's just like getting all a little embarrassed and stuff like that. So, a really good episode. Sad I gotta wait. Granted, I don't have to wait nearly as long as I have to wait for The Flash, so. But really, that's all I want to talk about in this episode. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.